Hi guys, my name is Borodante. All right, all right. Let's see what we can do here. So I want to make like a quick fan art 3D sketch thing of this type of character from Cyberpunk 2077. I think I'm gonna go with a female character, maybe, if I'll be able to. And I'm gonna be using Blender and Krita, just for the heck of it, going full open source. I'm gonna keep the reference on my second display and yeah, let's start. So I'm gonna try and use as many of um, somewhat interesting shortcuts as possible. The first shortcut will be simply using some kind of a base of a head from MB Lab plugin. This is a plugin for creating anthropomorphic characters of any kind. It's a really powerful plugin. There's like dwarfs and elves and everything in here. So I just press create character and see what happens. There you go. Oh boy. So that's one hell of a base right there. Yeah, you can change like uh, how overweight they are or whatever. I mean, all I care about is the face. I guess this is good enough. So yeah, by open source, I mean that Blender and Creta, they're both completely free and their code is available for anyone to alter or whatever and add their work to it. So everything I'm using today, you can just download and do the same thing absolutely legally without spending a dime. So that's the whole point. And this plugin is also free of charge to use by anyone. And yeah, I'm gonna be using as much of this kind of uh, shortcut things as possible. There will be a lot of sculpting, a lot of using of uh, ready-made materials, maybe brush presets in sculpting and whatever else that will be available to me as far as I know. Today's video is sponsored and heavily inspired by a new tutorial on wingfox.com. Kane and Avon creating a character in Blender and Photoshop. Okay, so here's where our model stands so far. I'm just gonna use some matte caps to make the thing look nice. And essentially the entire model is rigged to the point where we can begin posing it for our illustrations. Gerald SNG is a very experienced and talented senior concept artist that participated in creating StarCraft Remastered, Gears of War 4 and 5, Attack on Titan and much more and he's gonna guide you through the creation of an amazing character, starting with the development of the idea, concept design with drawing and photo bashing in Photoshop, classical modeling, sculpting and kit bashing in Blender, with the following material setup, basic rigging and rendering of the final scenes, as well as complex compositing and finalization in Photoshop to achieve impressive illustrations. This 15-hour course is available right now for $49 with a $10 discount coupon through the affiliate link in the description. Now back to the video. Oh, there you go. That's uh, There's texture going on. Very veiny. So I think I chose the Cycles version of it, so it will look appropriately only with actual ray traced rendering. Yeah, this looks not as veiny, but we don't really care about that because I think the texture will alter completely anyway. But maybe this base will come in handy as well. So yeah, I'm gonna have to decide on... I think I want to do exactly the same thing, so completely remove the upper part of the face, pretty much the eyes and uh, the forehead, and replace it with a bunch of cameras, I guess, and sensors that these guys had. Oh, there's teeth and tongue as well, that's fun. I think I want to go like this. Now, one thing though, I still don't know how to just fill a hole in a mesh in Blender. <laughs> like, there's fill holes thing in here, but it's really weird. You need to specify exactly how much points that hole needs to have. I don't care, just fill up all of them. And it's not an option, I don't... Okay, non-manifold did what I wanted it to do right here. Now, the question is, what do I do with that? I mean, I think I can like collapse it or something or merge. Boom. I literally just need to close the mesh. It doesn't matter how exactly, like how bad it's gonna look. Just because I'm gonna be sculpting on it anyway, it's gonna be remeshed or whatever. So that makes it clear that I need to remove all the teeth and tongue and the mouth interior as well. All right, that's good enough, I think. Cool. Pretty much 50% of work done. Okay, that's that's kind of too little detail. I think we could do better. 
Now this is better, but still. All right, that's pretty good. So I assume we lost all the materials and everything, so there was little point in doing anything. All right, it's time to sculpt, I think. So I'm gonna use like at least two meshes that are gonna be separate. One of them is gonna be just the skin and another one will be used for all the metallic parts. I'll be just adding bits of mesh all over the place and play with that. Maybe even use uh, Dentopo to not have any limitations on the topology or whatever. All right, it's time to go hardcore. Wow, they literally cloned completely this tool from ZBrush. That's like, what is it even called? Like trim, trim line or line project. What's really cool, even if you're like starting this line and you think like, oh, I need it to be like at this angle, but I should have started more to the right. Like this point should have been different. You can just press space and move it a bit like this. That's literally how it works in ZBrush. So I, I immediately intuitively did that. So cool. I mean, not cool, because it's stolen, but cool. <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? Where is that line between stealing ideas and generally just following the industry standard and repeating the tools? I don't know, but people have to work somehow. <laughs> like, at a certain point, it becomes just stupid to actively avoid the obvious and most useful way of doing things just because uh, another app did it first, so I guess makes sense. So yeah, overall, I gotta say, really cool workflow so far in Blender sculpting. A lot of hotkeys are really comfortable, like C for clay, G for grab, F for changing the size, I don't know why F. But anyway, I forgot how to like go about this kind of lame topology issues like these spikes. Like I have it right now and it's a multi-res mesh and everything. And even if it wouldn't be a multi-res, to be able to just like remash it to get rid of this. But uh, these issues I got from remashing in the first place. And then if I remash, how bad is the phase gonna become? Like it's already pretty bad, but I'm at the lowest subdivision level right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. It feels like the whole thing is shaping up in just one mesh, which is probably totally making sense for a quick 3D sketch. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. I don't know how I'm gonna apply materials to it. I guess I'm gonna just um, mix shaders using some black and white textures or something like that. But yeah, let's keep going. I still need to figure out like dynamics of this shape. It's not really a thing so far. This looks very uninteresting comparing to what we have in the game. There we go. That's one feature I really wanted to see working. You just draw some masks, then you press mask extract, quickly getting some islands of meshes to work from. Okay, so this is the original, right? So we can just increase that thickness like this. Thick. Now I just apply it and we can work with these bits.
Alright, I feel like adding some materials to whatever I have now, which is not a lot, but I don't know when I'll just run out of time or whatever. So I'm gonna use this Blender Kit, another plugin that you can just turn on in Blender, and have access to a lot of cool stuff. So here's categories, um, metal. I'm gonna start with that, I guess. So for this secondary object. And here we have the a little bit of an interface for that. Let's go with this one, of course. And what's for the skin? Organic? Yeah, skin is right here. Some gross versions, some nicer ones, but still pretty gross. Oh, that's so gross. Ew. That's, that's very translucent and very spotty. Alright, so what I did is I applied two materials. One of them is this and another one is this. And right now there's just one value that transforms from one material to another all over the whole thing. And now I need to paint a black and white texture that will specify where one material is turning into another one. <laughs> yeah, we need some UVs. Yeah, that'll do pretty much. We don't need more than that. Will I be able to preview it live? That's the big question. Alright, it seems to be working very slowly and with some dots appearing all over the place. Oh, these are just some spots on the skin maybe. But yeah, pretty much what we do now is we just apply white paint wherever we want that meaty looking texture to appear. Man, a lot of these dots showing up everywhere, I guess because of the messy UV I created, but like is there no way to not have that happen? Like who cares what kind of seams I have? It's a completely separate seam, is it not? Is it not? Look at that, that's so messy. Is it because it automatically placed them really close to each other? But why did it do that then? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you see like right here, it's literally touching that other island of polygons. Oh my god, that's intense. And what's up with this skin? What are these dishes? <laughs> that's some insane stuff. I love how this is like evil eyebrows kind of thing, like very angry face. I think the scale of the skin needs to be much higher. Yeah, that looks a lot more like real skin, maybe even three. A lot of these hairs are something really weird. All right, done with the materials so far. I'll also need to blend in another like metal material to that main mesh of the head in the future. But for now, let's keep going. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's also a really cool thing in Blender Kit for sculpting brushes. So in here we have, let's say, industrial. All right, maybe something else. Geometric, I think it's just circles, yeah. I have enough circles already. Okay, I'll, I'll apply some of the skin imperfections later on the other mesh, but in here, I don't know, let's take a look at that industrial again. Okay. Well, it works. <laughs> All right, 
right, let's see what these blisters are gonna be worth. Oh my god, that's so gross. Perfect. So here we go, now I'm gonna be painting in those metal parts. Really hard to orient in this thing. <laughs> what is it gonna look like dope <laughs> now I want to add some red uh, LEDs or whatever I'll add just a bunch of those mask extrusion like it's not gonna be a different material It's gonna be different objects so just paint some masks oh it's so low res there we go whoa Now let's put these in place. I have no idea what's happening anymore. All right, that's something. Now let's set up all the colors to not be so weird. I want metal to be a lot darker, I think. This is too bright. And we actually have like two copies of uh, metal material, which means we can make one of the metals darker than the other. That may look pretty cool, but it doesn't. <laughs> or at least the difference is too strong, maybe if I lower another one a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Alright, I think we have the base material to start working with in painting but I want to set up the lighting a bit more interestingly. Ooh, one more thing. I'll add some kind of clothing, just a quick hint of it. Again, using that method of extracting the mask. It's really cool, like the quickest way. One of the most rigid and slowing down things about 3D is that it's kind of hard to just quickly, like immediately create just a blob of mesh where you need it at the moment. Just make it really really quick so yeah but even like this is kind of slow because i need to remove the subdivisions and all that actually when you're adding an object right so say a cube i can then sort of grab and point yeah that that's that'll do <laughs> The only thing is it's like not symmetrical or whatever. I could just quickly paint a thing around the neck, that would be nicer. Another thing I like doing is just quickly duplicating an object, then of course deleting all kinds of stuff about it. And in here I could either in edit mode just select polygons I want to keep and everything else will be deleted, so pretty much the same thing. Or since we're sculpting today we can just do the same stuff. There we go. I wonder if this is gonna be useful at all. So is this thing working? Still doesn't. Like this menu on the, at the top just stopped showing up. It does that a lot. I think the best way is to just restart the plugin. There we go. Fabric. Fabric rough. Sounds about right. I can use all the textures I can get. That's one hell of a texture. <laughs> Gotta scale it down like 100 times. That's scaling up. Jeez. Yeah, alright. That looks fine. So yeah, I guess that's about it. I'm gonna render this in a decent, I don't know, 4K resolution. With really aggressive denoising and all that. That thing only works better for painting, to be honest. Like, at, at this stage, it looks really cool. <laughs> I really like the way it does, like a super rough work can look really cool, like a painting at this very early stage of denoising, looks really fun. 
But yeah, I'm gonna render it at something like this, maybe. And yeah, I'll just keep working on this in Krita. You'll see the whole process in the end of this video, so make sure to check it out. I just have to shut up now, because this video will take forever if I don't. So far, not that impressive, but the experiment is pretty fun. I'm just super excited about the game, really. I've been playing it for two days straight now, and boy, it's awesome. Very glitchy at the moment, although I haven't tried, there was another hotfix that was just released the moment I closed the game last night. Probably a lot of fun glitches are gonna be gone now, so that's a shame. But yeah, the game is really cool, and I wanted to do a little bit of a tribute. I guess most of the work will be done in painting, adding a bunch of details and just grabbing the base as a reference for lighting and basic geometry. I mean, I wasn't wrong, but also, before moving to Krita, I actually did quite a lot of work, three hours of it actually, in Blender. Chronologically, I replaced the material on the LED with the one from the Blender kit that worked way better. I set up some colorful lights around the head that made the whole thing look very cyberpunky, I guess. Then I did some changes with the skin textures and LED positioning. And then, something I completely forgot about before, hair. So that took quite a lot of time, because it was actually very slow. So anyway, after that I created some bones, rigged the hat and turned it a little bit towards the camera so it would look like it's actually alive. Then I did a nice 4K rectangle rendering. Better quality than I expected, but the shape of the hair was pretty bad since it was incredibly slow to manipulate in Blender. So I decided to work on the shape in Krita instead. Also in Krita, I added glowing effects, glossy highlights and red areas on the skin, a whole bunch of small details on the tech, tiny hair on the silhouette of the face and even a shirt at the bottom. So yeah, as I planned, the picture changed quite a lot in Krita, which pretty much makes it a perfect experiment of combining 2D with 3D, making a big contribution to the result in both. So yeah, this time-lapse will just keep going for a few minutes, showing you guys everything I've just described. But for me, this is it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!